Hello everybody, I'm Gwen Campbell Mendes. Welcome to Gwen's Bookish Ramblings. So, um, yeah, we're starting with a, a trilogy of romance fantasy novels. Because is there anything better than novels that cross genres? Um, I could probably answer that, but I'm not going to. In any event. Uh, so, yeah, this is a romance novel. I don't like straight romance novels. I like romance fantasy, romance urban fantasy, romance science fiction, romance thingy. If it's a, if it's a crossover where the romance is but one thread of the genre, then I may find it interesting. But a straight romance novel, I tend to find myself getting halfway through it and asking when is the story going to start and when I get to the end and discover the story was the romance my response is always that was it why didn't they do anything I don't want to spend all this time you know with them wibbling on at each other about will they won't they um part of it is that I can't seem to care about characters who don't have anything more interesting to worry about than the romance and while, sure, if it's a very well-written romance novel, one would assume that people have more things in their fictional lives than that, I very genuinely have trouble getting into things if there isn't more going on. In this case, uh, the female lead in this particular novel, because, as I said, it's a trilogy, um... The female lead in this is a duke's daughter and she is trying to save her people because her uncle took over the dukedom, the duchy, pardon me, um, upon the death of her father and has been running it into the ground and abusing the people who, you know, work for him and abusing her and abusing her step, her step mother, aunt, aunt-in-law, I don't know, uh, the uncle's wife. Um, he's, he's abusing his wife and he's abusing Merowyn or heroin. And, you know, things are just all around awful. So she, in a fit of desperation, goes down by the river and uses an ancient magical chant that she found buried in her father's library to call forth the so-called warriors of the mists. Now, the Warriors of the Mists are these five mercenary soldiers who got themselves into some trouble because they slacked off at the wrong moment, and the their uh, captain, Gideon, upon discovering that all of his friends were going to likely die because he had screwed up, had effectively begged the gods with his dying breath to save all of these people who had been killed or injured because he'd messed up. Um, basically, you know, doing that old saw of, I'll do anything, just save them all. And the gods say, well, fine. Will you work for us for eternity, never managing to escape unless we decide that you've done well enough? And he said, yes. And his five, and his four friends, um, each of whom has a animal, guide, totem, person, bonded, thing, I don't even know. Um, except for his friend, except for his uh, old friend and teammate, Kane, who has a gargoyle, which is actually kind of awesome. Um, but anyways, so they all, they all say, you know, you are sacrificing this, we're going to, we're going down with you. And so they all basically are in a sort of a magical sleep under a river unless they are called upon, and of course only the gods will bother to wake them up. Only the gods can wake them up, and the gods will only wake them up if the person calling is either calling about something sufficiently important or is calling at such a time that something important enough is happening that they should be called on. So Merowyn, when she calls, it's not serious enough that the gods would wake them up, except that there is other stuff going on. Um, the 
man who is in charge of their country, uh, who actually, now that I think of it, he's the Duke and her father is just like a Lord landowner person. Anyways, neither here nor there. The guy who is effectively the evil king in this, he's got some kind of an evil demon deal going on and we don't really find out all that much about this in about it in the course of this book, this is very much a trilogy that is clearly designed to be a trilogy because everything that's going on gets exposed bit by bit as you go through this series. As, as you read each book, the larger arc slowly comes clear. So this first book, it starts relatively small with Merowyn who's just trying to protect her people and her horses because she has a magical bond with horses and she can talk to horses and heal them magically because she has magic. Um, they have a very weird conflicted relationship with magic which I will not be going into, into until I get to the second book in this series. Um, but the thing is that I would say these are not great books. These are not the kind of books that you recommend to people fundamentally when you say, oh yeah, this is a great book and you'll love it. This is the kind of book that you recommend to people who like romance novels or people who really kind of like high fantasy stuff with romance. There's a lot of romance in this. There's a lot of schmaltzy eyes staring at each other and wistful thoughts and and stuff and there's sex there's sex in these novels this is these are not novels that are free of sex there is lots of sex in them um so you know you don't recommend these to people who aren't interested in romance stuff um you know that's not to say the writing is bad it's just it's not as good as it could be, and it's really mostly about getting people together. Um, it's, you know, it, the thing The thing is, of course, though, that each novel kind of focuses on one or two particular, uh, one or two particular couples. Uh, and I will talk about the other novels, of course. This one primarily focuses on Gideon and Merowyn, but Alina and Murdoch um, are the second of the romances, and they start to happen in this novel. They're sort of, they're exchanging longing looks and so on and so forth. Um, you know, it, it's... It's a romance novel. It's very, very solidly a romance novel. But the thing is that there's a lot of other stuff going on. There's the quest for redemption that Gideon and his men are on. There is the fact that Everill has adorable dogs and uh, the mountain lion, uh, Murdoch's mountain lion is delightful and Duncan has an owl and you know, and each of them has a story and a thing that they want to do that they can't do because uh, they've sort of gotten themselves into this and now they're, they can't get out again unless they sort of prove themselves to the gods. It's, you know, this is the kind of thing that you read when you're looking for a good, clean, well, not clean, there's a lot of sex. Um, you know, you're looking for good, romantic schmaltzy fun with a certain amount of over formal language and a certain amount of the you know uh i need a strong man to stand there and protect me and stuff like that um but Merowyn is she's a good character she's you know she's not one of those fighter types but she's also somebody who has no patience for waiting while people rescue her and indeed is not hugely interested in being rescued because frankly she's more interested in doing things for everyone else than she is in the rescuing which is of course a character flaw but it's cheerfully pointed out by everybody that what you're doing is dopey because you're making everyone's lives harder who is trying to protect you even though 
you know, your devotion to your duty and your horses is laudable. Um, and, I mean, like I said, because this is... Because this is very much a trilogy, there's a lot in this book that's kind of... that's leading up to something else, and you know that that something else is a something else that is going to be cropping up in the next book. Uh, so, you know, I like this. I enjoy it. It's fun, but it's by no means deep, and it's not something that's got complicated ideas, and it's not revolutionary, uh, but it's fun, and it's got horses, and animals, and stuff. And there's cute stuff. And, of course, there's a lot of longing stares between people who are in love with each other. So if you like that kind of thing, uh, there you go. So I guess that's everything I have to say about this book. Um, I'm not really shocked that I'm coming up shorter than usual. Uh, so I guess that's everything. And I will see you all next week.